Hey YouTube, welcome back. It's Sonia with Profile and Manipulation. So this is going to be the second part to this Voices Behind the Wall and Billy Joe, um, Lilani Simon and Quinton Simon reaction. Um, sorry I had to end abruptly before. Oh, weird afternoon. Totally weird afternoon. But anyway, everything is fine. Um, I'm just sat down now, we're clear on the sofa. Well, I hope to try and finish this. Uh, second part of this video uninterrupted so I'm just going to get stuck right back in I'm going to press play and then pause a few times and just have a bit more of a reaction I'm not going to make this one as long <laughs> I don't even know if Bubba's even tried to see his son I or actually sorry now I'm just going to say what my opinion is from Please me do. guessing from I don't know my friendship and hearing things that I hear or whatever um as I'm trying to word things very carefully. I don't even know that. So right here when she's saying, I'm hearing things and I'm trying to word things carefully, she's letting you know right here that she's letting things slip that are pri private thing, private pieces of information. They're, in, they're part of the gag order. That's what I'm understanding. She's letting us know about foster arrangements or foster um, conversations that have been taking place, possible adoptive situations that have been taking place. She's letting us know that there's lots of people being on this these phone calls and there's lots of different people talking, right? So they're obviously going to be, they must be like two, three, four, five-way phone calls they're all having between each other. <laughs> now, what kind of judgment does it say of Billy, J Billy Joe that after she meets someone in October, not immediately after, but very close to after, um, the disappearance of her grandson, does she form a relationship and a bond with this girl online and they go on to be fast friends and Billy Joe is sharing private information with voices behind the scenes. What, judgment, what kind of judgment is that? They've just met each other in October and now Billy Joe is sharing private information with her that shouldn't be shared, that now Voices is trying to covertly share with YouTube about these children. These children are a protected class. They're vulnerable. Why are you trying to share information that Billy Joe shared with you or that you've been party to hearing during these phone calls that you say where there's lots of people talking take place objectively sure be critical what kind of judgment does it say of billy joe what he, what is her judgment like that she meets somebody in the october after the disappearance of her grandson and then finding out he was murdered she's made a friendship around that time and it's only December now and she's sharing with that person private and personal information about her family life and about things that are going on in a family court or juvenile court as you refer to them over there. She deserves 20 days to be locked up if that's what she's doing. I hope that judge sees this video of you yet again sharing private information that should not be being shared. You know how I know it shouldn't be being shared? Because you're being careful to how you word it. All right? You should not be telling the internet anything that Billy Joe has been sharing with you. There's another part of this conversation somewhere uh, about Lilani. And that information that you're sharing could be used by the court in some way or could affect things in some way. When you're referring, you're referring to something that Lilani is a apparently shared with Billy Joe. Why are you sharing all this private information? Is it to fuel your own ideas of your own importance, your own self-importance? Because why are you covertly trying to share with your channel and all the rest of us watching private information about a murder investigation that hasn't gone to trial yet? She's not been sentenced yet. And why are you sharing information about that, those children, the, the other two children in that family that are now within the CPS system, 
right? They have had their whole worlds ripped apart, whatever worlds it was they were living. That's the only world they knew. And now a little boy is going to be no longer present in their little lives. Nothing is going to be the same again for those children. They've been removed from the place that was the most familiar. They don't see Diana anymore if they, they were there too. They don't see Diana and her daughter. Their whole world has changed. And you've got Billy Joe telling Bubba uh, they, she was probably high and, you know, he was probably in the bath and they were high. And what does she go on to say to Bubba? That, um, well, you, you, you come on, you're a different person on drugs. I'm a different person on drugs. And so that's some kind of excuse and reason. Uh, you're not the same kind of person when you're on drugs. I'll, I'll have to play it during this. It is just despicable what uh, Billy Joe says. Normalising, minimising and trying to gaslight this guy that in the same type of situation, it could have happened to him. This could have happened to him. And he even says to her in this phone call that's been recorded by him. Uh, I've just lost my thread now, what I was going to say. He even says they should have rang the police if that's what happened, though. They should have just rang the police. And Billy Joe says something like, something as simple as, yeah, well, we all do fucked up shit when we're on drugs. <laughs> This isn't fucked up shit, Billy Joe, all right? Your judgment with everything is just so far. Her judgment, right, her judgment now is the same judgment she had when she was taking control or leadership of those children. When she was taking charge of those children, her judgment then is as bad now as it was then. She's sharing private information with someone that she only knows from the internet that she's met straight after a heinous tragedy hits her family and suddenly she's fast and best friends with this person with a YouTube channel that she's prepared to put huge posters up in her back garden. They'd rather spend the money and the energy celebrating Sher by putting Sher on their back wall, their gate, right? What, what, there was no Quinton Simon thing. I mean, it was the public, um, the hecklers, I think, that started the memorial for him, for that child. I don't, I'm sure there wasn't even a memorial set up for him. And you've got Billy Joe in the front garden holding posters up, uh, Quin uh, Justice for Quinton, knowing the whole time that she drove him to that dumpster and waited for that lorry, that truck, that dumpster truck, to come and take, empty the contents from that dumpster into the back of the truck... can't even see it and then drive off with the contents of her child in the back of it to a landfill site so billy joe she's forging friendships with people that she barely knows and sharing pertinent information important information private information with her and she's also saying to bubba we all do fucked up shit on drugs as though this is just some fucked up shit that happened. Okay. And that's all the while knowing. Because she knew then. This wasn't just an accident and he drowned. She knew then. This wasn't just an accident. Right. The accident that could have happened to anybody. That she's trying to place on Bubba. You know. Well it could have happened to you. This could have happened to you. This is you know. Could have happened to anyone this. That's the judgment Billy Joe has. The same crappy judgment now in the decisions and the choices that she's making by sharing information with this woman, right? The things she's saying to Bubba, trying to get him to believe, okay, that this was just some fucked up shit. She's still making bad decisions. She's still making poor choices. Poor choices. She decides to ignore the judge and keep sharing more and more information. Still keep coming on panels, being in streams, talking, chatting in the streams. Hang on a minute, love. These streams are for us, right? They're for us. They're not for people that have just found out the worst news of their lives to come hang out and chill, right? No, no. Like, what? As if your, as if your brain after something like that so quickly as finding out of her being arrested 
she was literally on panels the same freaking day and in streams the day after and the day after and the day she's continued to be around i've kept seeing her in chats i've had to screenshot some of the comments i was like mind blown reading them like what the hell are you saying insane let's say mr danny yunkin has even put in to even try and see his baby girl I don't even know if Bubba's even tried to see his son. I or actually And you shouldn't know because that's private information. Okay? That's private information. Sorry. You have I take no that business back. knowing. Forgive me. I forgot. I forgot, so forgive me. But I think she just well, tries to imply there that actually, yeah, she's got mixed up. Bubba has tried to have some kind of contact, or one of them has, right? So who's who's given her all this private information? What's going on in that court and who's seen what kids? So she's still making poor choices, BJ is, by sharing information with somebody that's covertly trying to repeat it and find ways, as she says, uh, I'm just trying to word it in the right way. She's still trying to share with us private information that's been going on in this family court with these children that are protected. Can you believe it? She should not be doing this. Is this woman not a mother? Why are you sharing another... M well... Not a mother, but why are you sharing other children's private information out of a ju juvenile court, out of family court? Why are you sharing it online? Why do you want to share it with us? Why does it matter to you so much that you impress us with all your background information that you have on this case? We don't give a fuck about the background information. I don't want to know what is going on. It is not my business, right? I, I, I hope, though, that the best, decisions, the, best decision, the best decisions possible are being made for those children. Because they, again, have had their whole entire little lives turned absolutely upside down. And they'll probably never be the same again. Might not show up now, but it will one day. All right? It will, all this trauma will. They will come to know what happened, what they were around and what went on. And they will have trauma from this. And what else they could have possibly witnessed. Who knows? Who knows what those children witnessed that night when she did that? She was on, a low, on her own long enough to commit the act, take him somewhere, wait for a truck to come and then come back to the house and have a story lined up about him being abducted. She is sneaky as fuck. Okay, she stood in front of the cameras. I don't know why these sociopaths insist they always know or they can always fill the camera or they can get in front of the camera and be convincing and get away with it. They, they, they're, just, they're just embarrassing at this point. Absolutely embarrassing that they keep insisting on coming on camera to lie that they haven't done anything to these children or their, their families. It was the other one's father. But anyways, all I'm saying is that I've only heard of, like, other family members fighting for these kids even now. Like, I don't understand. How would it be even an option? How does she know the family members are fighting to have contact with these kids who's sharing all this stuff with her? Because eh? I think I think BJ needs another 10 days because this, this is only on day two of BJ serving 10 days for allegedly already, be, already being in contempt of the court and sharing private information and talking about those children when she shouldn't have been. And here's this one here on day two of her serving a 10 day sentence, uh, giving us more and more private information about those children and what's happening to them or what could possibly be happening to them. She's, th this is no loyalty to BJ, all right? You should not be encouraging BJ to speak and telling her, well, you have rights too. Why are your rights being denied? None of Billy Joe's rights are being denied, except she has been told one thing. Do not speak of these children and what's possibly happening to them publicly. Do not share it with anybody, right? Do not share it. And what does she keep doing? Sharing information about those children. So she's still not protecting them now, is she? She's still entitled and above the law, BJ now, okay? She's been instructed to stop sharing private information about those children and she's still sharing it. And we know that because you're sharing it with us. There's no other way you would know those things. No other way, because I know the the the, the fathers um, of these children, the siblings, the surviving siblings of Lilani, uh, children of Lilani. There's no way they have been sharing this information with you. 
BJ's locked up presently, but you've been, like you say, you're on the phone all the time. The phone gets passed around. There's a lot of different people talking. Okay, so you're all on the phones all day, all of you. I, can, I, can, I just, just can imagine it, a network of toxicity, right? Each of you all just fucking, oh God. Idealising and fangirling the other and just enjoying just enjoying the drama of this tragedy. That's it. Enjoying the drama of this tragedy. And in part, creating lots of the drama too. You're creating drama in the middle of this tragedy. Okay? You are. Because if I'm not mistaken, I've overheard a conversation that had me believe mm -hmm. I thought I heard something about a foster family was wanting to adopt and adopt the kids now. So I don't know. Mm, right. That to okay. me is kind of weird. Like, so did, did did the other families try to? Can they not? Why can't they? Are they not fit families? Like, do you why do you think that's your fucking business? What happens to those other two children, or which families do what? Why do you think you're entitled to know that information? Why do you even sit there surmising as though you are? You are not. Who are you? Who do you think you are in relation to this case? You have formed a bond with the grandparent, right? This uh, of a dis this a dysfunctional, toxic woman, a liar, all right, one that's prepared to gaslight her own grandson's father into thinking this was just some accident and everybody does fucked up shit on drugs, right? That was minimising her own grandson's death <laughs> to the father of that child. The Do I have to say this again for you to understand how sick and disturbing it is? Billy Joe is recorded on a call speaking to the father of Quinton and telling him she just thinks Lilani had got high and done some fucked up shit while she was on drugs. And that is how it resulted in Quinton dying. Okay? Are you having a laugh? She transported that baby, not 100% knowing if he was dead or alive, and she put him in a dumpster and waited for the dumpster truck to come and retrieve that dumpster. And when it was emptied into the truck and the truck drove away, only then did she leave her lookout point of watching to make sure the dead child, the dead body of her son, was disposed of and discarded. Uh, and it was out of, you know, she'd, she'd got rid of the evidence, or she thought she had. She thought she'd got rid of the evidence by getting rid of his body, okay? Now, some of the sickest killers out there don't even go that far in disposal of bodies. <laughs> Lilani Simon did. She knew what she was doing, didn't she? She knew the best way to get rid of the evidence was to put him there and have that happen to him. Now, some of the sickest killers that have been alive or that have roamed this earth haven't gone that far in disposing the body of the person they have hurt. But Lilani did. And this was a baby, okay? This was a baby. It's bad enough to kill anyone, right? But when you're talking about extra vulnerable people, like children, little people, her psychopathy goes up a notch. Just, just, just right there, he does. It goes right up, just there. And we have Billy Joe minimizing it oh you know they probably say that's a story that Lalani told her mum we have all these counts if there's nine there's 19 counts on this indictment right and several of those are for, are for lying to the police lying to the police so even at this point she hasn't come out and said this is what i did a b and c and I am guilty. So we now know when we look back at that interview that she gave in front of the house with Billy Joe, that's what Lilani looks like when she's lying. Because she said there, if there'd ever be a sign, like, like, like you'd say this sentence anyway, if, if it comes out that it looks like, oh, there's proof that I did something, then I'll walk myself down to the jail and Billy Joe, yeah, and I'll walk with her, right? Hmm. So we knew... We know now, well, we know we do anyway, but we know now definitively that she was lying at that point when she stood there and said that, right? And we know now that Billy Joe was running around trying to minimise it and 
she was playing it all off as an accident to minimise, to minimise, right, the dangerousness of her own child, to protect her, right, to protect her. She's trying to play it off as an accident. And if they hadn't have found his remains at the landfill and they didn't know what they know, where she's on camera or this person's on camera disposing of this body, right, she would still be letting us all believe that, that it was, she can't remember, Lilani can't remember, but um, possibly he was in the bath and we got high and we forgot about him in the bath and he just drowned and we just panicked and had to get rid of the body, okay? That's what Billy Joe would still have us believe in, all right? It's probably, it's probably worked out as a negative for her that she's actually inside locked up right now. Because I'd love to hear the bullshit that would be coming out of that woman's mouth right now. Because reading those counts, you can't minimise this anymore and pretend this was some kind of fucked up accident because someone got high. That indictment shows her to be the monster that she is. The waiting of the truck on its own is enough for me okay trash she's the trash that should have gone away in that truck not that baby do you guys understand what i'm saying here <laughs> or do trying you, to say do you understand what's been going on here do you do you i thought you were a victim's advocate but then again what kind of victim's advocate lies about their own father's murder right I think you have the same lying issue as that family. The same dysfunctional issues, some of them, as that family, okay? Because you're manipulative, I've caught you on here, trying to be covert with it, right? And sharing information that you shouldn't be. That you fucking know you shouldn't be about those children. If you cared a damn about that, that family, if you cared a damn about that fucking family, the way you're pretending to across the internet, you wouldn't be divulging personal and private information about those children and leaving it on the internet for everybody to read for in years to come and when, when, when everybody else has forgot about this case. You should not be sharing information about those children and you are. You are supposed to be a protector, a victim's advocate, aren't you? Aren't you? Well, what about these two victims, these two little children? They're victims. And you're divulging information about who's possibly fostering them, who's in talks to foster them and what's possibly happening to them. It's none of our fucking business and you aren't entitled to it. And Billy Joe's judgment yet again in relation to protecting those children is bullshit because she still isn't protecting them. She's still sharing private information with people she shouldn't be. Right. Because if she'd have done a good job on choosing who she was going to share information with, she would have been able to foresee that you were going to use it as content and she wouldn't have ever shared it with you. Okay? And she keeps sharing information with you. So she's still not protecting those children, is she? So you think she deserves our sympathy while she's still running around sharing with you all kinds, all, all their secrets? You're a disgrace. I could be very wrong. Maybe I heard wrong. I, like I said, I wasn't told anything. I just, I've been on the phone a lot and many people talking where the phone gets passed around like a hot potato and it's, uh, so yeah, I've heard some things that make me wonder, well, damn, so is You could excuse yourself when those kinds of conversations are taking place and get off the fucking phone. That's what you could do. If you were a victim's advocate, you could say to her, look, I'm here for you. I'm here to listen to you whenever you need to talk, but I cannot be party to hearing things that have been spoken about in that courtroom. By CPS. There are other sides of the family is not fit enough to the parents either. What is going on? Are we still supposed to believe after today? Did, did they want... If you're going to look at the dysfunction of the other sides of the family and claim here publicly that they're not fit to, to, to... They're possibly not fit to have contact either, then you better fucking address BJ's dysfunction. Okay? Ex di talk about hers. Let's dissect hers. Me act alone? I don't... I don't know. Should we pull up? Do you guys want to see it again? Hear it again? Because... I kind of don't, but I'll pull it up if we want to go through. If you guys have questions, I'll answer. But I think you guys kind of understand. Like, I'm seeing still so much problems with, like, what the freak? If I'm correct and I did overhear a conversation about a foster family possibly adopting them, do the baby daddies not have to sign off on something like that? I don't know. Obviously, fathers 
on a birth certificate have to sign their rights over in order for their child to go into the adoptive system, right? So yeah, they do. And everybody knows that. It's, it's a simple fact. Okay, it's just a simple fact. You're screwing the semantics around. I don't know. That's weird to me. So I'm not sure what you guys think of that. What, like, so are they not fit to have the kids either? Why are they not fit? Could Danny possibly be more involved? I'm not sure. So what is it again? At 529, Danny texted the babysitter that her services were not needed, right? No, please. No, don't show it. Okay, we're not going to show it then. I think it's around enough. If you guys want to Google it, it's on the news. It's on other channels. Uh, if you want to go through it, Queen Bee went through it. Um, I just, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I've heard enough. Uh, and honestly, there, I at the same time haven't heard enough. So I don't even really want to go there yet. We knew there was going to be charges. It's disturbing what's put out today, but we don't need to, it's, it's out there enough. Let's just, dads do have to sign off on rights. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, Billy has custody of the kids. So would it be up to Billy to have to sign off on the adoption? Now, I overheard this conversation about the same day she texted me and said, she's going to be in trouble for contempt. Um, yeah. Oh, well, there's, I, I, I saw one of come out. So you heard parts of the conversation on the day that she told you she's going to possibly be in trouble for contempt. So she knew at that point then, whenever this was, that she was possibly going to be in trouble for contempt and she still continued telling you things. Well, I wouldn't expect, expect, I wouldn't expect anything less, all right? Why would I expect this woman to be doing all the right things now when it's far too late? And she isn't doing the right things now. She wasn't being honest with the father of that child. And she's still sharing the other two children's private information behind the scenes of where they may or may not end up and just be straight with you guys and say da -da 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 -da, but i cannot because there, there's so much that still doesn't make sense to me right now um we don't know specific dates yet but she's hoping to have a week or two notice um i'm not sure how much notice she'll want to give publicly to people when she says there's too much of this that doesn't make sense to me now Sometimes toxic people, they just love having you believe that things are more complicated than you can ever understand and you just aren't intelligent enough and you just wouldn't get it if you knew, all right? It's far too intellectually challenging for you to be able to wrap your head around. I mean, Jesus, what are we talking here? We're talking family court. What do you mean? This is, everything's all too confusing. As well, but uh, there is no date set right now. Um, oh, all you can see is mess. Bye! You should. Oh, I'm just going to leave that alone. Hey, Busy B. Danny Swan canceled the sitter. Right. So let's go back to that for a minute. Okay. So mm -hmm. 529, Danny Swan canceled the sitter. We had the babysitter uh, actually publicly say it was Danny. Well, then she said it was his phone. Now, um, so 529 canceled. Why did they cancel that day? I don't know. I have always said, and so has some loved ones always said, in my belief, the babysitter was canceled at 529 because there was not all three children to bring over there that makes sense now that's at 529 um in my speaking to leilani uh i believe and i haven't seen like time cards or anything so forgive me but i and we know her own mom has said it her loved ones have said it uh the courts have said it the wife said it leilani lies but leilani told me that he was uh 15 minutes late 12 to 15 minutes late clocking into work he was supposed to be at work at six and he didn't clock into about 6 12 6 15 according to leilani what she said to me on the phone um so i don't know like i said i haven't seen time cards i haven't seen anything that would prove or disprove that he clocked in late. That would be, I guess, up to the law to find out or, or show. I don't have that. That's just what I was told. Um, Leilani. Yes, Leilani is getting those charges. Um, so babysitter was canceled. So late to work and work would take, um, would they say, 15 minutes from their house to his work. So if he was up to cancel at 529, he shouldn't have been 12 to 15 minutes late to work. He would have been to work on time. It amazes me how she can discuss what Danny was doing and every detail down to the minute of where he was or wasn't. But she will not or did not when she had BJ and Lilani there. She wasn't prepared to vet them in this. She weren't prepared to question them in this same way, was she? Then it was OK to overlook things. BJ can't tell me stuff. It will affect things. Lilani this. Lilani's innocent. She's forgotten. She doesn't know what happened. She could have possibly blacked out. We heard all this crap, right? But look to the detail she wants to go to in order of considering all the other people possibly or possibly not involved in this case. She'll go down to the minute. If you listen to her here, she saw detail down to the minute she knows where this person allegedly was or wasn't and that there's minutes unaccounted for. Well, how about we got the same kind of 
How about we saw the same kind of treatment towards Lonnie and BJ? Why were they allowed to hold information back and we can't say this and we can't say that because of this and because of that and we've got to protect ourselves and we've got to be careful. But then you expect Danny to what? Just show up and give us all these information and tell us absolutely everything. Really? You're showing some bias here, sure. Bias. Like right on time then, if he had cancelled the babysitter and went to work. In fact, he would have had 10 or 15 minutes extra. So, 529, babysitter cancelled. He's not supposed to work till 6, but didn't clock in till 612. Okay, we'll give him that three minutes because she said between 612, 615. We'll say 612. So, 530 to 612 is 43, 42 minutes. 42 minutes from cancelling the babysitter to him clocking in to work. Now, let me pull something up here because... I always thought it was funny because around like seven something in the morning is when the babysitter decided to load up her car with everyone and go to McDonald's, right? I want to pull something up here. See, I don't think she can do this. If she's going to be this involved in a case, I don't think she can then cover the case and, and be like this about the other people connected to the crime. Because it just comes across as it is, as it is, that it's totally biased. You've already taken a stand. You've already made a decision on who, where you're leaning to, on whose side you're on. So then you don't get to question the other people the way you are doing. If you're not prepared to question the ones you're supporting, that same way in public. You're prepared to dissect all their accounts. But we never see you dissecting Lelani's or Billy Joe's account. That's brushed over, overlooked, and there's an excuse and a reason. OK, but here you crack on as though you're being graceful and giving grace to Danny because, well, you know, we'll just give him that three minutes. It's all right. We'll just give him that three minutes. Okay. So one of the first like interviews she did, she was talking about going to McDonald's. You guys remember that? Where's that? If anyone has that clip or can remember what uh, interview, can you send that to to me on Facebook Messenger, would you give me a second here? Um, but they were outside, like seven something. I can't remember the time. I'm trying to find it, but she said they were outside. Um, they went to McDonald's, but she was home in time because at eight, eight in the morning, like eight ten, something like eight ten in the morning. We're gonna pull it. We're gonna pull this stuff up. By the way, I'm just having some technical difficulties. Uh, about eight ten in the morning, babysitter was outside at her house again uh, to see Danny Youngkin drive by the house, just do a drive by and drive away again, right? So. Right, sorry. Give me a second. They had only one car. Well, he drove. I don't know, was he in Leilani's car or what? I know that his mom or grandma, his mommy, I think, had to come and uh, pick him up when he decided to leave, and take off or whatever he, whatever he done. So, yeah, I don't know for sure. Do we have it anywhere? Did the babysitter see it's him drive by at 810 day. in Leilani's car then? Was that said? We're going to have to pull it up, right? Exactly, uh, I bet Daniel, the charge is just not like... Exactly, Laura. She is a liar. Exactly why she has like 15 damn charges of lying. Well said. I was going to find another portion and go. So if he, like I said, sometime in Leilani's car then, was that said? We're going to have to pull it up, right? Uh, I bet Danny will get charges just not like her. I don't know if he, like I said, sometimes the they have to uh, make a deal with the devil. You know what I'm saying? To bring a baby home. Possibly that's what they had to do. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Sorry. We'll call Danny the devil. But we won't call it Lilani, okay? You notice that? Lilani's referred to with the utmost respect here. And the excuses given, you know, it's hard for me to have to talk to the mother of that child and speak about possible death penalties. But we give zero fucks when it's Danny, okay? Released on the 20th. You, I heard released on the 26th. I'm sorry, I missed the other comment that went with that. Why was he left in mother's presence if BJ was supposed to be in care of him? Well, uh, Billy, question. BJ's job, and as well as her husband, her, her job is she's an oil welder. She's on the road for weeks at a time. Um, you silly thing. She is an oil welder, okay? She's on the road for many days at a time, you silly person. What a question. And again, Leilani was allowed to be around the children, just not alone, and she was not left alone with the children. Are you listening? Leilani was allowed to be around the children, just not left alone. Okay, so how did she kill him then if she, was, if she wasn't allowed to be left alone? Huh? Who was supposed to be making sure she was not left alone? The brother, right, so you're going to... The brother, all right. Or the boyfriend, was it one of them? So, hang on. So, um, Grandma, dearest, Billy Joe, is in charge of the children. She's the, going to be the responsible caregiver, the responsible adult 
that protects them, okay, because that's what a parent is supposed to do, protect, okay, she's decided to take on that role, protect, but she's working out of state because she's an on your welder, guys, okay, so what did she do then, did she pass on her responsibility to the boyfriend, or did she pass it on to the brother, <clears throat> hmm? because neither of those are a valid excuse, you have take, taken charge of children that are being abused and neglected, okay? Do you really think that was a good decision or sounds like a good decision to pass the responsibility of being my eyes and ears and um, watching these children like a hawk? Do you think that that was a good decision or a smart choice to pass on that responsibility to the brother, to somebody like the brother or to somebody like the boyfriend, okay? that haven't got your insight into even raising children or to even understand what all this CPS and abuse stuff is about because they don't know the ins and outs, okay? So you thought it was okay to swan off to another state because you're an oil welder uh, and what? <clears throat> Misplace the responsibility with other adults in the house. You can't do that. You don't get to do that. And this is, this, see, this is what you're not understanding. Once you've taken on that responsibility, that primary responsibility, it falls on you to ensure that whoever you leave those children with, they protect them too. And if there's a risk or a slight chance or any chance or a possibility that it won't be, that you, that what your guidance will not be adhered to, then what, what do you do? Then you don't go through with it. You don't follow through. You don't make that. What do you think the rest of us parents are doing to avoid our kids um, having horrendous accidents or disappearing or uh, having some other heinous tragedy happen? What do you think the rest of us are doing? Right. Well, we're not trying to just pass such a big thing as a as the responsibility for a child onto a sibling of that child, right, that probably fights with them and there's probably a, a power struggle going on between the two, sister and brother, Lelani and the brother. And then you know that, because it's in one of the, it's in one of the uh, interviews that I read, that her and her arguing with her boyfriend were in part some of the reason why B B Billy Joe wanted them out of the house. So did you think to what? Leave the responsibility, pass that responsibility button over to Danny, the boyfriend, Again, how do you not see, you people, that the responsibility still falls at BJ's feet because she made those decisions and, and she decided what was safe and what wasn't. She decided it. She decided, I don't get to um, leave my kids with somebody, right? And if it comes out later that this person hurt my children, guess who's responsible for that? Yes, I know that person is for hurting them, but I am in some part responsible for making a crap choice to leave my kids there. All right? I'm responsible. And I tell you what the problem is with all of this as well. Healthy people blame themselves. They always do. When the blame is never theirs to take, they will blame themselves, right? Toxic people are always about blaming everybody else. That's the difference. And that's another way how you spot them. There'll always be somebody else to blame. Whereas healthy people will take accountability and responsibility for things, right? Especially in relation to children or their children, they will take it even if it isn't theirs to take because they feel bad. They feel guilt. They have a conscience, all right? I have not heard her crying why I should have known not to leave them. Why did I do it? If any 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 of us were her, we would be boxed away in a room somewhere blaming ourselves, not socialising and listening to other stories of other children going missing. She was in the chat when Athena Strand went missing. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? Right? What the fuck? Your grandchild... You was just you have just found out has been dealt not he didn't even he did not get a fair shake. Quinton proves that not everybody gets a fair shake. No, no, you don't. And no, life isn't always what you make it because sometimes other people are making those choices and decisions for you. Okay. 
This is bullshit, Cher. Absolutely bullshit. Where she was not supposed to be. There's no possible way Billy would have known that, right? Because Billy was uh, at work, uh, out of the state, actually, as well as her husband. So she didn't even know at that time that Danny or Leilani, whoever, but the babysitter was cancelled. So the, the kids were a lot with the babysitter as the babysitter had... She put in herself in a position to not know what the hell's going on. She put herself in that position by buggering off out of state and going working, being an oil welder. I'd be interested to know, to know, do her and her husband work at the same place when they both leave to go and work away? Do they work at the same place? Told everyone and their mom a hundred times um, that... Um, uh, that she had them like all of the time. You know, she said that she got paid very little, but she had them for, you know, all of the time. So again, it was Danny's phone that canceled the babysitter, not Billy. Billy didn't cancel the babysitter. So um, on October 5th, um, Billy, Billy and her husband didn't get home until like 3.30 in the morning on October 6th because as soon as she heard, they had to get on the road and come back. And I don't remember what state they were in, but yeah, so Billy didn't know until after. And it wasn't Billy who canceled the babysitter. And again, Leilani was not left with the kids. Danny was there. Now, when Danny went to work, so hang on. Uh, the so kids were supposed Joe to go with the babysitter. So, home at half three so again, it was Danny's phone that canceled the babysitter, not home? Billy. Billy said that she got paid a little bit, she had them for you know, yeah, all yet. of the time. So again, it was Danny's phone that canceled the babysitter, not Billy. Billy didn't cancel the babysitter. So um, on October 5th, um, Billy, Billy and her husband didn't get home until like 3.30 in the morning on October 6th because as soon as she heard, they had to get on the road and come back. And I So Billy Jo was on her way home at 3.30 because as soon as she heard, she was on the road. I cannot be hearing this right. How did she know to come at half three? If they only made the call at 5.29, I thought it was after that point that people started finding out something had happened to um, uh, Quinton. remember what state they were in, but... Yeah, so Billy didn't know until after six because as soon as she heard they had to get on the road and come. So again, it was Danny's phone that canceled the babysitter, not Billy. Billy didn't cancel the babysitter. So um, on October 5th, um, Billy, Billy and her husband didn't get home until like 3.30 in the morning on October 6th because as soon as she heard they had to get on the road and come back. And I don't remember what state they were in, but yeah, so Billy didn't know until after. And it wasn't Billy who canceled the babysitter. And again, Leila. I must have missed part of this story where there is some where in an article, something that says they alerted Billy Joe in whatever state she was in at whatever time that there was possibly a child missing, right? But then it doesn't make sense. The rest of what I know the story to be was at half five, the babysitter's cancelled, and then I think it was at like eight o'clock, the babysitter was offering to look or eight or nine o'clock in the morning, she was asked, she had got a phone call asking how she seen Quinton because he they can't find him. Yeah, that's the story. So how did Billy Joe know at 3.30 that she needed to be making her way home or, or she got home at 3.30? Because if she got home at 3.30 on the morning of the 6th, 5.29 in the morning hadn't arrived yet, clearly. She's two hours early. Because at 5.29 is when they cancelled the babysitter. Right? And then some kind of story developed. Oh, I must have missed part. Could someone please let me know in the comments. How did Billy Joe know <clears throat> that she... And she would have had to know before 3.30 according to this. I'm just going to have to listen to it again. But apparently she was home for 3.30 or she didn't get on the... What did she say? She didn't get on the road. You've got to be bloody careful. What is she saying? Because as soon as she heard they had to get on the road and come back. And Billy and her husband didn't get home until like 3.30 in the morning on October no, 6th. Because they didn't get home till 3.30 in the morning on October 6th. Hang on, am I understanding this wrong? Oh no, okay. That was later on. I. It's me, for God's sake. So this was the morning after. Because... Wasn't it the th the fifth? He went missing. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so he went missing on the fifth that morning. That the early hours of that morning was it? And then Billy Joe was driving. Was she driving all that day? Driving all that evening, that night, into the sixth at three thirty a.m. I think I'm up to speed. It's me. I'm so dizzy. As soon as she heard, they had to get on the road and come back. And I don't remember what state they were in, but. Yeah, so Billy didn't know until after, and it wasn't Billy who canceled the babysitter. And again, Leilani was not left with the kids. Danny was there. Now, when Danny went to work, uh, the kids were supposed to go with the babysitter.
And so, and again, the babysitter was canceled. Yeah, your heart is, yes. So Why when would, Danny went to work, the kids were supposed to go to the babysitter. So Danny still went to work, didn't he? I believe he still went to work because did he not come back? So Danny still, so the kids were supposed to go to the babysitter the same time he left for work. And he, I'm sure he leaves for work. He leaves between that hour, 5 and 6 a.m. And be left with a non-custodial parent. Well, I don't know what you mean by that because technically uh, custody was not fully given to Billy until October 6th. So it makes sense of that. One thing that Billy told me and she's... What plans did Billy have in place for uh, um, assuming custody on October 6th? That's what I'd like to know. What plans had Billy set in place for when she got those other children in her custody, legally. Had she cancelled this job, had she found another job, had she got a nursery, other things organised? Could she be around more to be there, to be the one doing the nurturing and the, giving the, the giver of the care, filling the child's needs? What roles did she have in place for gleaning custody on the 6th? She was uh, in fear when she started going through these court things. Do you think any mom wants to take her kid to court? Hey, sis. Um, no. Do you think any mom wants to take her kid to court? These types of mothers, in my opinion, often their kids are in and out of court, all right? That's how it goes. That's usually how it goes. But you can see all of the things that she has done, you know, with Leilani. So the people saying she protect Leilani and enable Leilani, she was taking serious action. Foot to ass with Leilani. How was she taking serious, ac serious action states away? How was she taking serious action states away? How? 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 She... Set up a plan that wasn't foolproof in the first place. And the major the lion's share of the care, the lion's share of the nurturing that those children should have been receiving was going on a few doors down at the neighbor's house, the babysitters. All right. And as the babysitter confirmed herself, her eldest daughter, her 18 year old, had Quinton a lot because she says how devastated she is, too. Because she's got used to having this baby. She's been the one looking after him. She's ended up being the primary caregiver. An 18-year-old, several doors down, the babysitter's daughter was Quinton. I mean, where did this baby have to turn? All right? Where did this baby have to turn? This is the plan of action BJ put into play. So I tell you something now. If the court had given her custody on the 6th, just after seeing this plan... Right? If CPS had have given her custody after knowing that all this was the plan, this is how it, this plan was being, that was, this is how it was all operating, right? From her several states away, barking orders and telling people what they need to do rather than do it herself for her own grandkids. I hope that judge would have told her those children are being removed and they're being removed today. That's what I hope that judge would have said. But very likely, they fucking would have reneged on all of it and let it fly. Very likely, they'd have let this bullshit routine, this plan of care, fly. And Danny. And Danny is snitching. Yes, definitely. Ha oh, it has to be, says it has to be. Like, no doubt. Um, but she was always concerned that... Now, why would you write in the comments, Danny's a rat? Mountain Mama, Danny's a rat, for sure. Would this not be an instance that somebody needs to be fucking ratting someone out? Are you stupid? Danny's a rat. A kid has died. This is the time to be a rat, you idiot. Lani could have actually taken all of her kids and left the state. Her and Danny could have picked up and moved to a different state with those kids and there wouldn't have been shit. That, Billy that court and everybody else deserved to know exactly what was going on in that house. He was a witness to it all. All right. Even if he was enabling it himself too. So was BJ. You don't have no disdain for her. But Danny's a rat. Is he? Is he? For telling the police the truth. He's a rat. So you've demonised the whistleblower. Right? The one that's been pulled, possibly pulled into the police station and asked for background on the things that he saw and witnessed and heard. And he's a rat. Why is he a rat? So should, so should he not be telling the truth what he saw happen to that little boy? Would you prefer he hold back the information? Lie by omission. What is it you want? Danny is definitely a witness for the state to save his ass. Is he? Is he? Is he? Why can't Danny be 
as blind to this the dysfunction as the rest as uh, the rest of you are why can he not why can he not be as blind as the rest of you at that dysfunction that was going on in that family huh why is he uh, not allowed the same kind of treatment that you all give each other overlook things turn a blind eye to the red flags ignore what's there pretend you've not seen it put the rose tinted glasses back on really danny is not a rat all right if he's told the truth about the things he saw happen even if it was in his company okay because i would struggle to be able to do that <laughs> to confess that i have witnessed heinous child abuse and said nothing i mean pfft. I won't be able to live with myself. All right. So if he has told the pl the police, the judge, whoever, good. I'm glad he's a rat because somebody should be telling the truth about what happened to that baby because BJ isn't for doing it. She's over there trying to gaslight the father of that child, Bubba, uh, that they possibly just got high and everybody does fucked up shit on drugs. All right. That's the grandma. That's how she references the disappearance of her own grandson. That's how she referenced the disappearance of her grandson to the father of that baby. She's prepared to lie by omission and lie to that man, right? To protect her blood while pretending to you lot, which I don't know how you fall for it, that she's against what's happened. Stupidity knows no bounds, okay? Not about it. To knows be honest. Knows no bounds. Could you imagine if Leilani actually went through and picked up with Danny and took off with the three children to a different state? She would have to go, Billy would have had to go to the different state and then filed through that state and gotten, like, it would have been more loopholes. And then she could have kept leaving. You've seen people that do that. In fact, the, the Wells state hopped all the time. My mom, province hop, same fucking thing. Oh, yeah, that used to be a fear. That was a huge fear of, of Billy's, which is one thing that led her to say, to hell with it, yeah, I'm her mom, but I have to take legal action on my own daughter because I'm afraid she's going to kidnap my grandkids on me and I won't see them again. She was afraid of that happening. Just before. So she was afraid that her daughter might leave the state and she wouldn't see her grandchildren. Well, she's states away working a lot of the time. Okay. So what was it then? A tug of war, a control issue. You're not taking my grandkids away from me. She's one of them entitled grandmas that just assumes her title means that she is allowed to see them come hell or high water and it doesn't matter what the mum says. Is that what type of dynamic you're spinning out here? All right. Yes, in some states, grandparents have rights. And I'm not saying, generally speaking, grandparents shouldn't have rights or don't have rights. But there are a lot of grandparents that are toxic that take advantage of those rights. All right. They're the ones I'm referencing. OK. And you have to meet them to know them, to know the crap, that the entitlement that comes out of their mouth. A lot of them seem to think they have more rights to their grandkids than the parents have. They'll try and... Oh, I'm not even getting into it. Let's just carry on what with What happened? This. Imagine that. Danny is a weasel. I'm not quite sure with that. I know there's some back and forth with that. I have to read it a lot better. Where are we talking about what Lilani is? Oh, thank you, Brittany. Stop trying... Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. Stop trying to make BJ a villain. She's not. Lilani is the villain. <sighs> BJ is the villain in this story, okay? She is the one that left um, a faulty plan in place while she buggered off a few states away to work at a job she loves. Look, okay, when she took the responsibility on that she wanted to protect these children or be there for these children, right? She was going to be safeguarding these children, protecting their needs. She had no business working the type of job she wanted to work, all right? Because as we all know as parents, what you want doesn't matter when children come along. You come last, okay? So, yeah, this job that she enjoys so much, it's fine if you're a single person with no responsibilities, okay? Or your children are grown, right? But it's not fine when you're preparing or you're allegedly being the guardian for ch little children that need you at home. They're too little for nursery and things like that. They should be at home. You know, just a normal home life. You don't get to have that kind of a job when you're when you're being the one that's been responsible for minors like that. Do you hell? You get a job closer to home and even if it's a crappy job that you don't like, you work it because it puts 
money in the bank that puts food on the table to look after those children, which is the is the primary responsibility. That's the that's the only thing in this whole thing that matters. That those ch children's needs were being met, and they weren't being met. She was leaving that to other people to juggle and organise, right? So she's leaving it to the boyfriend to drop these kids off at the babysitters, right? And he goes off to work. And what's Lilani doing all day? Just dossing about? What's she, what was she doing all day? So she leaves this plan in place and, and it falls on the other adults that she's determined need to make sure this plan of hers follows through you know like say me working i would have to organize the child care and organize the pick up the drop off the differences in like the after school club from the from the finishing school so if their after school club only started or was in a different area than than being at school even say if i was at work all day like a 10 till 10 in the morning till eight o'clock at night kind of a, a shift it's still it's my responsibility that when they finish at school I've got something in place that gets them to the after school club or to the childminders, whatever it is they're going, until I finish work at 8 o'clock at night. All that responsibility falls on my shoulders. It doesn't fall on the person that I've put in place to do it and if they just casually fuck it up, then it's their fault. No, it's my fault because I chose a crappy type of person to fulfil such a huge responsibility and such a, an important responsibility. She... She should have been over here to make sure and maintain that the plan she'd set in place was being followed through, okay? But the thing is, she wouldn't have needed such a complex plan in place if she wasn't working away. She wants to have a cake and eat it. She wants to keep control of the children, right? So Lilani can't move away or run away or go, just decide to move states with a new boyfriend. That sounds the way you're phrasing things here, that that was more important to BJ than their well-being, okay? Just the fact that Lilani can't just, isn't going to be able to do a midnight flit and bugger off to another state anytime she wants or wanted. It's like, it's more like it's a control issue than a safety issue. Before, uh, but to my understanding, I guess she had left the house twice. Um, I don't know. So there was the dumpster in front of that trailer, uh, trailer homes area. Uh, apparently she or her car, allegedly her car. I don't know if it was just her or her. Identity, I don't know. But allegedly, according to the law, her car is seen there at the dumpster. She goes to the dumpster. She throws something in the dumpster, allegedly. And then she goes or whoever goes back to the car, sits in the car. The garbage truck comes, takes the garbage. The garbage truck drives away. And then allegedly that's when Leilani's car drove away after. So you've been there with you. There's a yeah. Yeah, I know. So many questions still, right? If the dads are not legitimized or are they married to the mom, the dads have no rights. Only on Wednesday. Okay, so this is Quentin Simon's favorite book that Nana read him before bed whenever she could, whenever she was with him. This was his favorite book. Here we go again with this subtle manipulation, though. Why do we need to know this? Unless you're trying to paint a picture of how BJ was or how she wants us to believe she was. You're trying to paint a picture constantly of what a good grandma she was. She read... It's a good job you said when she read this to him at night when every night when she could because she was working away for weeks on end and left other people in charge of her charges. OK, what does it matter that she read this book? Why do you insist on even? I mean, she plays the whole thing so you can read the book practically. Right. You can read the book. What is that doing for us in relation to Quinton? What truth is that giving us? So he liked having this book read, but she worked away for weeks at a time. So what about the book that the babysitter's daughter read him or the babysitter? They were the ones he was seeing daily. If you want to be, if you want to be authentic here about Quinton, all right, it would have been smart to keep good relations with those people. But there can't be good relations with them, can they? Because they can tell the truth on what was going on.
all right? So they need to be demonized so that nobody listens to them and everybody thinks they're bad people, all right? Well, they weren't that bad because you were dumping your grandchildren at their home, what, every day of the week, right? And still expecting her to have them more overnight. <clears throat> so they can't have been that bad, but the whole time they've lived there, and the whole time they were looking after those children, they were fine. But once they started speaking after this happened, after Lilani did this, after the disappearance of Quinton was made public, they're now the bad guys. We don't see Billy Joe confronting Lilani the same way she confronted the babysitter, do we? Where do we see that? We don't see BJ being as aggressive and verbally abusive as she was with that babysitter, huh? Blaming her because what? Because they text her at 5.30 in the morning and said he wouldn't be coming and that somehow lies at the babysitter's feet. You lot are delusional and <sighs> the overlooking you must have to do inside your mind to be able to make that make sense is unreal. You're just lying to yourselves ostriches head in the sand anything the good guys were doing we're going to demonize but anything the bad guys were doing we're going to minimize and normalize that's the situation i'm going to play a little bit more of this and then i'm going to um let you guys read uh, not read watch if you go want to go watch it then feel free to go watch the whole thing i recommend that you do though so that you know, you get to have your own informed opinion on this without my interference or, uh, you know, possibly swaying you. I, I want, like, just go look. I don't agree with what how she's um, portraying BJ and Lilani and this whole situation. I don't agree with it from one side of it to the other. You may agree with points, parts, certain elements, whatever. That is completely fine. This is just my independent stance on this whole thing i'm just disgusted with all of it disgusted with the way she plays it down minimizes it normalizes it it's about presenting bj as though she was some amazing grandma look right if you're an amazing grandma you don't need people strangers that you've known for two months well six weeks to come online and start showing you vi videos of books you used to read your grandchild because the validation's already in your heart you don't need to prove it to anybody else because that validation is a force to be reckoned with that's you don't need anybody to tell you what type of grandparent you were you don't care what other people think about what type of grandparent you were because you fucking know you were there every second of every day but bj can't do that can she because she knows she was thousands of miles away several states away for weeks on end while she knew her daughter was abusive and abusing her own grandchildren and she was a danger to them there weren't all these signs, there weren't CPS involved, there weren't her having to take these wild steps of having the kids here with their, this person and then that person and then they go back home and then they go back to this, right? There wasn't all these pl uh, plans in place because everything was tickety-boo, okay? There wasn't. She knew her daughter was a danger to that child and that's all she needed to know. As I said in the first part of this, she did not need it printed out on a go flipping receipt saying... Uh, your daughter Leilani is a high risk to any children, so there's a well, there's a risk she could hurt one, kill them. So we just want you to keep a closer eye on her. I mean, that was who? Who the fuck does she think was ever like? What was she waiting for? Abuse, right? They, the the abuser can't control their temper, can't control their mood. They can't manage their emotions, right? So they lash out and they will typically target all of the children, but one in particular will usually get the, the, the brunt of it, okay? So when they're, when they're, this is, they're not safe because when the kid does something wrong, these types of personalities, they don't have a high threshold for bullshit. They don't have a tolerance for tolerating anything that isn't, appeasing to them or acquiescing to them in some way these kinds of people narcissistic people they don't make good parents and they make terrible parents when those children are babies because <clears throat> the baby wants the attention 
and the narcissist wants the attention. All right. So who do you think they get angry at when they don't get the attention? When the baby won't stop crying, who do you think they get angry at? They abuse the baby. All right. So just knowing that Leilani was abusive to her children, that might mean when the children are naughty or they do something that's not good or something they shouldn't, okay, this parent is going to have less patience and she's going to have more anger towards those children. So she's a risk or just on her own there, the anger element of all of this that you get from drug taking because your, your moods are affected, you're frustrated, you're, easy to, you're quick to anger, you're easily impatient. Just the drug side effects kind of do that to you. So never mind her own personality type, which seems to be very toxic, whether she's on drugs or she isn't, okay? So you know that that parent's abusive, that lashes out, gets angry quickly. You've got to walk around on eggshells. You've got to feel like you've got to hide parts of your personality or not say certain things so you don't set them off. So that kind of a personality type is Leilani. So why would we leave children with her or anywhere around her? Because at any minute she could just decide to smack one, it go too far, it gets hit, the baby gets hit too hard, falls off the bed, f bangs its head. Any, I mean, anything could happen. They're a risk. Hello? They're a huge risk if they're abusing their kids. Okay? The abuse on its own is the warning sign that this kid has a chance of ending up dead. It's being abused. What more do you need to know? Why are these people all waiting around for a bloody invitation from somebody to say, hiya, you might want to be open to the idea that your kid's possibly going to kill one of your grandkids. The, what world are these people living in? The CPS involvement, she can't even maintain 24 hours looking after these children. All right, she can't even call. She can't even get through 24 hours being the primary care provider of the children, their own mother, right? You've got all these things in play for a reason. She knew. So stop this bloody bullshit of trying to have everyone believe she was this amazing grandparent, okay, that wasn't looking the other way when she saw abuse by her daughter to her own grandchildren. Because we know that that's the truth. We already know that's the truth. Because you won't be coming with this narrative to constantly try and keep showing BJ in a positive light. There's the guilt. That's this. The things we do are projections. And if she's putting you up to this, or whether you're doing this of your own accord... OK, it's because, you know, deep down the shit off with BJ and you need to make her seem in a, you need to be making her be seen in a better light. That's all this is for. There's no adults in that side chat that need to sit there while you read, allegedly, one of Quinton's favourite books. It's just complete manipulation. Hey, guys, I'm back. I had to uh, shut down a bit. So anyway, I've just jumped around a little bit. Right. But. What I want to say here as well is, ultimately, sure, and this is to you, ultimately, sure, if deep down you really, truly believed BJ holds no responsibility or no accountability for the part she played in this role, you wouldn't be trying to come up with all these different excuses, excuses and reasons why it isn't her fault, okay? Because it would be... That's how it would be. It would be plain and simple. They wouldn't need, you wouldn't need to be... Looking at the bro looking at the fathers of the children, the ex boyfriends, the ex partners. You wouldn't be looking at them. You won't be pointing direction at other people. You won't be pointing us or directing us to be looking at other people. They were not in this house. They were not part of this um, care plan that BJ put into action. All right, they were irrelevant to that. She put a half-hearted care plan into place and tried to continue living her life as she wanted it to be working out a state for weeks at a time if you're serious about taking on the responsibility of somebody else's children and you already know that they're being hurt so they're already in a state where they're going to need therapy and most of them can't even communicate effectively yet due to their age and they're already experiencing all this instability and trauma. And they can't communicate because they're, they're too young. They don't have the capabilities. It's devastating. If you were to go and foster a kid, right, hypothetically, and you knew you were taking on a child 
that had come from a rough background, abused. I mean, I, I can't define how much I love my own children. I can't put it into words. But if I was to foster a child in this home that I knew would come from a broken, abusive home, I would know that they would need more from me than my own children need. All right. Their needs would be different. Their issues would be different. You would do. This is how I see it. If you were to take on a child that you knew had been abused, I mean, would you not just move heaven and earth to try and help that child? You would move, move heaven and earth to help that child if you knew they were coming to you from an abusive background. Now, these children are small. They're little children, all three of them. They're little children. Two of them. I'm not sure how the old, how old the oldest one is, but um, I think that one's more of an age where they can talk, but they still don't understand what's been happening to them. They can't understand it. They don't have the brain capability yet. They don't have the um, communication skills. They're not effective in any kind of communication, little children. They can't really... Oh, God. It's just devastating. So those two younger children, the ones that um, are still like babies, they're already in need of therapy. And they're not even five. They're not even five. And they already need... Oh, they're going to need therapy, right? To be able to reframe what they've experienced. If people think this, these little babies are going to be affected by what they've experienced in the first early years of life. I mean, think about the milestones children need to meet. I know because of the research I've done, I've been able to find out what's wrong with me going back to milestones that were missed in my home. Right. And I'll give an example for that. Right. If your child comes to you with a hurt knee and they're crying, mummy, mummy, I've hurt my knee. And you say, oh, go away, get on with it, you're fine, right? And then they come to you another time, there's a kid picking on me, mummy, there's a kid picking on me, right? That girl's doing this, she keeps hitting me, or she keeps pulling my ponytail. Or stop being so soft, just get over there and hit her, hit her back. Stop coming whining and crying to me, Right? And if again that child comes to the parent another time and they're saying, Mommy, my teacher was mean to me today in school, right? Or she shoved me. I was at the back of the line and I wasn't fast enough and the teacher shoved me. The teacher was mean to me today. And you say, which was the, the, the reaction of my mother, well, you must have done something wrong. You must have done something to deserve it, right? Those three examples mirror back to the child that they don't matter and what happens to them don't matter, doesn't matter, right? So if they fall over and hurt themselves, if they get an injury, it doesn't matter, right? Because that's the breaking the knee, the uh, hurting the knee example. If they've said that another kid's been hurting them, right? You are mirroring back to that child that if another adult does something to you, abuses you or hurts you, it doesn't matter, right? And that is, in my opinion, one of the reasons why us as those children that are having that done to us, we're typically prone and vulnerable, extra vulnerable to other predators being around. Because obviously the caregiver, the primary caregiver, the parent, isn't protecting their own children and, you know, nurturing them, right? So you teach that, that they often end up, in a lot of cases that we read about, falling victim to um, sexual abuse by like a family friend, an uncle in quotes, or mum's boyfriend or a stepdad, right? And if that parent is mirrored back to those ch that child, what somebody else does to you doesn't matter. And I'm using some of my own experience with this, real life experience. When someone has sexually abused you, as in my case, as when I was a child at nine, I couldn't... Um, it didn't dawn on me to tell my mum because I'd already been conditioned 
through this lack of mirroring from the parent that the, if somebody did something to me, it doesn't matter. I don't matter. So people can do things to me and it doesn't matter. If I tell what happened to me, I am always the one that gets into trouble. So often kids have been conditioned, and this is how deep this dysfunction goes, to believe that if somebody else does something to them, it doesn't matter. So back to the milestone. It's important for little children, right? When they're crying, they're hurt or they've fallen over or somebody's hurt them or someone's done something to them, that we mirror back, that's not okay. Are you okay? Let me look at your knee. Oh, mummy will clean it up and put a plaster on and give it a magic kiss, right? I'm just using what I used to do, okay? Let, give it, mummy, give it a magic kiss and it'll get better quickly. You'll be all right, right? Doing those things when another girl or another kid's hurt your kid and you say to your kid, that is not okay, who was it? I'm going to go over and speak to their parent or if it's like a gathering at your house saying you've got all the kids in your house, you would say to that kid, did you hurt her? What did you do? Why did you do that? Well, please don't do that. That isn't nice. That's mean. Do not do that, right? So your child is witnessing the mother, the parent, say these things that have happened to you are not okay and somebody is going to get um, held, somebody is going to be made to be accountable for it. The person responsible for doing it is going to suffer a consequence, right? Well, because you've done that, you can go and sit on the timeout step for two minutes. You've hurt, you've been pulling a hair, off you go to the timeout step and you can think about what you've done, right? So you're all those kinds of behaviours that we just like, that just go over our heads, we don't even realise we're doing these things or we don't even realise we're not doing these things when we brush our children off, right? They teach the child they matter all those instances so there's these milestones is my point that these other children in Lalani's home well that she's the mother of because it's not even her home they're learning these things already picking up on these things they were already picking up on them should i say so bj being out of state right and she already knows those kids are being abused and her. I mean, if you know that you're going to have in your care damaged children that have been abused by their own... I don't know what I'm doing wrong, why this message isn't getting through. I don't know what, how I'm not articulating it clear enough. I don't understand it. These children, if you knew you were going to have in your care children that had previously been abused... I mean, I know... I know how far I'd go to protect mine, right? I know how far I'd go to make, well, I know how far I'd go because I'm, I'm doing it. I'm actively doing it, being a good parent, right? So I know the lengths I'd go to, right? To ensure that they're safe and to, if, if, if there ever was an issue or someone did something to them, I'm that lion there, right there, all right? And I'm also the parent that isn't overlooking their poor behaviour or their, you know, behaviour, you know, like um, things that they shouldn't be doing. And they're telling fibs or little lies or whatever. I'm overlooking those things. That's my job. That's my job. And to know that you're going to have children in your care that have already been hurt and damaged. I'd go even further for them. Right. Which is. I'd go to infinity for mine already. So for a kid in my care that I knew had already been hurt like that to that degree, those, the way those children were being, your grandchildren, BJ, your grandchildren, her grandchildren, sure, okay, her grandchildren, when you keep trying to shirk her accountability or responsibility for her role in all of this or lack of role, she put a half-cocked plan into action and pissed off and thought she could just carry on how she was. Those children were being, had been traumatised, right? And they're too young and too small to even be able to express it. And you don't think they need their grandma 24-7. You don't think children that are having that done to them or that have experienced that at such a young age, you don't think that they need a stable 
immediate member of the family to take control and love them. No? Right. Well, they're being abused. They've been abused. My daughter's a risk, but I'm just going to dump them at the babysitters all week, right? Well, she's trying to run her life just like you're trying to run your life, except you piss off a few states away for several weeks at a time. So you intrude this babysitter's life. You put it on her to keep having these children, to worry about these children, to check up on these children, right? Just randomly, like the story about the pool, whatever that was, okay? But it's her fault this happened. It's her fault. So this woman can't win, right? She was either, because now it's all, she interfered, she's telling lies, she that she was just pretty much, you've just pretty much like made her out to just be a POS, okay? And she was the one that was having those children. I mean, how many hours a week was she having those children? 60, 72, 112? How many, how, how many hours a week was she having children that didn't belong to her, that were being abused, that were at risk to from their mother, high risk, and you think continuing a job several states away is all right. And you, sure, you, you are blame shifting for this woman, downplaying her accountability for all of this, right? And I've just explained to you little milestones. How is an 18-year-old kid aware of any of this, of what child raising, child rearing, or the, the intricacies involved in raising little children? And the things that are important that they meet, the, the milestones that are important that they meet, it's important that they meet them. Because if they don't, okay, you end up something like me, where you, you, you get to adulthood, but then you have to spend your entire adulthood trying to repair, fix, heal, reframe all the fuckery from your fucked up parent that they passed down. Why wasn't she? I can't, I can't understand it for a second. There are three tiny little children that were being abused from their mother, right? She's having multiple boyfriends. And the grandma thinks working away for, for several weeks at a time was the best idea, was the best plan in place to protect those children. She tried to, what she tried to do, BJ, she tried to shove all the responsibility off onto the babysitter. Okay. That wasn't as nice or as lovely as that woman is is or may be as lovely as her 18 year old daughter may be that is not a good long-term plan as it was being for for those children just being dumped with an 18 year old all day until the babysitter got home there's no continuing what's the word oh, i can't say it i can say it in my head but i can't say it out loud there's no continuation of the care whereas if they were in a nursery or a preschool, you know how they do. They have them in a routine. They let they let them all come in. They mess about. They're playing with the Play-Doh, the plasticine, the jigsaws, the chalk, whatever it is they're doing, right? Then they're having a snack. They've all got to sit down at a table. So they're learning how to sit at a table and conduct themselves as, you know, mini people learning how to eat. And they're all sitting at a table sharing and interacting with each other. Then they're away from the table. They have to go and wash their hands. They're being taught about hygiene. Then they have to sit. Then they have to sit or play, and they're doing another activity, or they're taking them out into the playground to play for a bit. Right? These are the things that are going on in a preschool, and they're going on because children need those kinds of things. They're being given, you know, children's safe scissors, getting their motor skills going, cutting paper, cutting shapes out, drawing shapes, trying to learning, teaching them how to write their name. I mean, so. Don't, this is what I'm saying. So dumping them at the babysitter where the 18-year-old seems to be the um, primary caregiver in that environment, who's making sure any of their just normal child needs are being met? No one was. But because just dumping it at the babysitter's house, like, how can an 18-year-old just keep coming up with regular, regular activities to do throughout the day with these children that don't even belong to it? She's barely even experienced life and she's 18. It's not like she's a mother, right? This 
this whole setup, this whole arrangement she made, it should have been foolproof. That's what you do if you care about your kids. I don't leave my children with somebody that um, might have to go to work or if there's a problem or I've got an emergency. What was that babysitter supposed to do if she ever had any emergencies or errands to run or things to do and she couldn't have the children for an hour or she needed to have an, she had an appointment somewhere randomly? You're leaving it to her, right? For when for, for, they were like they were her children, so if that woman has some kind of emergency, she's to use her own kids, her own kids to look after your grandkids, right? And struggle and fuck around. You should have been there twenty four seven. That's the whole point to this. That's the whole message. So you can all keep saying all you want, right? That BJ doesn't have no responsibility. There's no blame to lie at her feet. If there was no blame to lie at her feet. All y'all on that side would not be finding excuses and reasons to minimise and to normalise what the fuck was going on and how it wasn't BJ's fault. You wouldn't have to keep reiterating it or trying to find ways to subtly, covertly send a message to us that it's not BJ's fault and all her world's ended. She's lost all her grandchildren. She's lost another child. She's already got one in prison. Well, boo fucking who? Maybe she should have thought about that when she started having fucking children and she knew she was toxic herself. All right. Was it she locked up for seven years? Had her children away, taken away for nine years? She was a prostitute. She's dr she used to drink. She was an addict. Different men in the home. Instability. Right? She's the matriarch of the whole lot of that chaos. All that narcissistic chaos lies at her feet. And it's about time these mothers, these grandmothers that are toxic, and I'm talking specifically about the toxic ones, not the ones where they do have a daughter with an issue and they have to take temporary uh, guardianship of the grandchildren and it's a the, the grandmother's healthy, that kind of thing. I'm not talking about those instances. I'm specifically talking... They, the, the, the ones who I'm talking about, they'll know who they are, all right? Because just like if... A grandma that's doing this, when they're listening to me saying all this, they'll know who they are. They will know who they are, just listening to this, all right? Because this is a regular pattern of the family dynamic within narcissistic families, within narcissistic homes, within toxic families. The grandmother, right, fucks her own child up to the point they're not capable of looking after another human being. And when that kid goes on to have children, there's the narcissistic grandparent always interfering, right? And when it gets bad enough and all the CPS involvement, they'll take on the kids and they'll just carry on the toxicity and it's all calculated. As hard and as terrible as that is to believe, that is what goes on and people need to open their eyes and wake up to it. They need to wake up to it. All of this situation was no accident. BJ knew the risk was high that her daughter was dangerous around her own children. And we all knew that. I mean, we, you know that when she's pregnant and she's taking cocaine. And not only that, we know when the baby's born with cocaine in his system, she had cocaine in her system upon delivery of that baby. CPS, in this instance, need to be charged. They need to be taken to court. They need to be charged. Those workers, we've had to do it over here in the past. Specific social workers have been charged for their poor decision making in relation to the safety of a child. And if children are important, like we keep saying they are, right? If all these instances of parents killing their children and beating their children or abusing their children are important and they matter, then the people responsible that played a role in it happening need to be charged and a message needs to be sent out that we will not tolerate dysfunction being passed down and then that parent right standing by and allowing the abuse to continue they they should be charged and whoever the fuck that social worker was that let that baby after knowing her blood uh, count or what her reading was that she had drugs in her system whoever that social worker was that made the decision that she was okay to take that baby home needs firing they're not safe around children they're not safe around children and all these cps workers all the stuff that i've spouted off here you can find it in books you can find it in research you can find it in articles 
okay so if these social workers do not have the knowledge of trauma and generational dysfunction and generational abuse if these social workers are not up to speed or knowledgeable or well versed and well read in trauma for children and how it how it damages them and how it comes back in. If they're unaware of all those things, they shouldn't be in the fucking job, is what I'm saying. They shouldn't be in the job. I should not be knowing more than a social worker about uh, abuse being passed down and what it looks like and how to recognise it. You only needed to look at Billy Joe's rap sheet to recognise there's red flags here. There are red flags here. This mother has been in jail. She's had her children removed. She's been an addict. Now her daughter's getting into trouble with the police. She's not looking after her children. There's three kids under the age of five with three different dads. Right? So, so hello? Hello? What the fuck do they think's happening? All this is what? Nothing? It's all just overlooked and played down? No, 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 no. Anyway, I'm just going to jump on to um, this other video where she... I want to find that call where she gets that woman who claims... I'm sure she claims to be BJ sister. I just want to find that. And I just want to also clear up um, on the, I don't know if it's in this part or the first part, I think it's in the first part I uploaded, there's that blue picture that's got Grandma on hugging um, baby Quinton and then there's pictures of Quinton and Paw Patrol on that blue picture. Guess what it was? Guess what it was? I didn't realise at the time. It was Quinton's coffin, right? And sure, in another video, is bragging that she had involvement in helping BJ choose his casket. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? So again with BJ in the poor decision making, you're letting a fucking woman that you've known since October have a say in what that precious baby's coffin casket looks like or how it's decorated. You're disturbed. You are disturbed, you people. If someone said to me that I'd known for that long, this and sure, right, Miss Life Coach, Miss Fucking Victims Advocate, where is your advocacy? You should be saying to her, I cannot, as, as sweet and as lovely as that is, I cannot be involved in deciding or in the decision making of what that precious baby's casket looks like. All right, I mean, it's bad enough that the fucking grandma, right, wants a picture of herself on it. Does that not say everything? Does that not say everything? She wants a picture of herself hugging Quinton on that casket. And she is the fucking matriarch of all the dysfunction, right? That ended up in his, that resulted in his death. I can't believe how sick it is. I can't believe how sick this is. I feel like, do you know, I swear sometimes I'm the crazy one. All this is normal, Sonia. All this is normal. You're being over the top and you're being the dramatic one. You're making this worse than what it really is. Well, do you know what? Do you know what I say to myself? No, the fuck I'm not. You know how I know? You know how I know? Because abuse, abuse is deadly serious. It's deadly serious. And after what happened to me and what I experienced, right? Those, those adult children that survive abuse and then that no other children are being abused and being raised in the same way that they were, worse worse right how we should be we should be the speakers we should be the ones raising the roof for change starting with the cps system okay all right it's like people on a jury service for example okay if you're having a rape victim or an abuse victim or um, a case like that. You need jurors that are experienced or knowledgeable in trauma and how it affects the brain and the, and the things it can do to a person. The reactions or the behaviours. You should be knowledgeable on that. Think about it. You've got a victim, right, who, who's acted out or done something or killed her, 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 her abuser. And you've got people on a jury that don't know anything about trauma and none of them have ever, ever experienced abuse. What kind of uh, decision making? Like, it plays a role. This knowledge stuff plays a role. The, 
what the fuck was CPS doing? Why were they waiting till October the 6th? I mean, if you know children need removing, why are you making a date to make that happen? They should be being removed then, on the spot, out of the house. You know they're being abused. Like, well, we're going to come back in a month and then we're going to officially move, move them. I don't know what the fuck is going on with the CPS system over there or over here. But it's fucked up, okay? And we can't... This is, an, um, this is a system where you can't afford to have children falling through the cracks because what that means is the ones that fall through the cracks are the ones that end up dead. We've had a kid in a suitcase... We've had a kid in in a in like a box, a plastic box. We've had one put in a fridge. We've had people oh, the sick stuff people have done to these young children, and now they've tried to dispose of them and export, uh, uh, get rid of them. I mean, it's just beyond disturbing. Anyway, I'm going to find this phone call and jump onto that. Give me a second. Right, so you see the screen, Billy Joe, I'm in trouble, contempt of court, okay? So she knew, she has known the whole time, she's known the whole time that she's not following the orders set out by the judge. And to me, again, that's more poor decision making, it's more the making of bad choices. But you guys, whether it's your ignorance or whether you think that you're being kind or um, you think that you're being... You can't be too hard on her, right? This is more proof of her poor, of her poor decision making and not putting those children first. That's where your thoughts, your passion, your um, care and concern should be about those children. And that she's still not protecting them because she wouldn't be in contempt of court if she was protecting them. Okay, you think a fit mother or fit grandmother would keep making all these screw ups? And bad choices, it just kind of happens. By 45, you know what the fuck is up. And you know how I know that you know what the fuck is up? Because I'm 43, all right? And I know what the fuck is up at this age, at this point in life. You would not be making these kinds of mistakes if you were serious about those children. This is her, and yet again, her, she can't follow or she can't obey authority. She has got issues with law and order, the same way her daughter has. You don't accidentally keep breaking the law. You don't accidentally keep doing things the judge has asked you not to do. You don't just accidentally do that. It's a decision to do it, all right? It's a decision to do it. And she has continued and is still continuing at this point. Right now, at this point, the CPS should write her off as any kind of um, of having any kind of bearing in those children's lives. At this point right here, she needs writing the fuck off. And if you keep excusing the fact that she's in contempt of court, like I've heard you all do over that side show, play it down. You don't want her to hold to, you don't want her to be held responsible. You don't want her to be self accountable, right? Just write it off. It's not her fault. Feel bad. Look how upset she looks in that bloody yellow turtle suit in that bloody, uh, like a suicide smock, anti-suicide smock or whatever it was that she was wearing, right? Everybody feels sorry for BJ. You don't think, do you not, that that face that she put on for her mugshot was calculated? You didn't think that a sociopath like her, right, could be calculated enough to pose a certain look on that, on that photograph because she knows the whole internet's going to pull it up and she's going to be able to use it Right. For the ones that believe she's the victim in this whole story. The fuck she is. She ain't no victim in this story. Right. She is an active problem in this story. In fact, she is one of the people that led to her daughter killing her grandchild. And that as cold and as hard as it is, that is the truth. And I am sick of all this fairy tale bullshit where we all have to put rose tinted glasses on and we can't say anything because that's judging it's not judging like i think it's mostly an american problem but they have an issue with being seen to be like they're judging just when they're being clear about a situation that's not judging 
this is not judging what I'm doing, right? She's thrown, where do you think of getting all this information? It's all out there Be, from BJ herself, from her own behaviour, from her own behaviour. That's what her behaviour demonstrates. An inability to follow law and order, even when it's in an important instance, such as regarding her own precious grandchildren that have been through abuse and trauma at such young ages. I can't understand why nobody wants to get up and shout about how bad this is. She should be moving heaven and earth, heaven and earth to protect those children, not talking to you and having you on three, four, five way calls where the phone's being passed around like a hot potato and you're hearing things you shouldn't be hearing. Because if BJ is letting you, someone she's only known since October, hear private pertinent information that's been going on in that family court, right? Do you know something? I do suspect that she had that earbud and you were listening. I think in a roundabout way, when you said there's loads of people and you kind of overheard this and you kind of heard that, I think there's a high possibility she wore that earbud in court so you could listen in. I think that's what was going on. You were listening in. And I think um, that's how you can say that all these different people were talking and they were talking about different things. That would make sense to me. OK, and you are have and you have got access to private information that you shouldn't have because you keep sharing it on your live streams. You keep sharing private information about those children. So what kind of victims advocate are you? Where's your advocacy for those children? Why are you not telling Billy Joe, look, I want to keep a clear boundary. Those children have been through enough. I know you want to talk to me, but I can't be that person where you're sharing private court information with me. Share it with your husband. Talk to your boyfriend, whoever he is. Talk to him. Talk to him, okay? You can't be sharing it with me. I am not allowed to know, but you're not. No, you're there loving it. That's why you're there. That's why you've got close to her. So you can be the number one and be first with all the information. All right? Playing a role that makes you seem more important than what you are. Okay? That's what all this is to me. That's what all this is to me. So this is the book that BJ has sent me and she's actually wanting me to read it. I think I'll order it actually as one of the, I want that awesome copy from Elon. It's loves to read. Because I said it's been, a, uh, it's been, a, um, well, it's been a couple months, but it's been a week. <laughs> We're only on Wednesday. Okay, so this is Quentin Simon's favorite book. That Nana read him before bed, whenever she could, whenever she was with him. This was his favorite book. Why do I feel like this is being pushed on me? For what reason? Why do I need to know that BJ, when she was in town, used to read B uh, Quentin this book? Why are you... Do you know what? If BJ would get off the fucking internet, right, and stop igniting fires everywhere, this, this, she shouldn't be on, for this, what is going on right now, that she's in family court and there's been a murder, her grandson's been murdered, this is the last place she should be, okay? This, and adding to, add just adding to this chaos, this drama, and all of this mess that's unfolding. She should be concentrating on a daughter and on what is going on with those grandchildren. That's where she should be. That's where she shouldn't give a shit how her reputation's looking on the internet. Okay. And she shouldn't need somebody fighting her corner, trying to persuade us with emotional manipulative tactics that this was a grandma that really cared. Okay. This is what this is what they want you to believe. That um if you're being in charge of children that are being abused currently by their mother, and that mother is your daughter, uh, you working out of state for several weeks at a time um, is completely fine. Making arrangements to just dump them at the babysitter down the road, right? Paying her crappy money for the work she was doing and the responsibility she had on her shoulders, right? They want you to believe that all of this is just normal and fine and we're being over the top. And you know what? This is like societal narcissism. The narcissists are telling you that all your reaction to all of this is completely over the top. It's too dramatic. BJ's the victim here, right? And then the real victims of this story, the real victims, they're overlooked. They're overlooked. It was just an accident. Um, I did, I, um, you know, what? why should I not be able to leave my, kid, my grandkid with its mother? Uh, because you know the mother's abusing him. That's why. They're just trying to play this off 
like it's normal in society and it isn't. None of this is normal. It is not normal. The last place she should be is on the internet. The last thing she should be doing is sharing private information with you from that family court. And I do suspect if that earbud story that you told is true, that she was apparently called out by the judge for wearing that earbud, I think that's what you were listening to. And that's why you have all these accounts. I'm not saying that uh, BJ isn't sharing the information with you because I know that she is. If she's messaging you to say, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for contempt of court, she isn't, she isn't even upset in the messages. It's just like, oh, fuck, I'm in contempt. Oh, all right, okay. I mean, forget the fact that a baby's just been murdered. We don't know exactly how she even did it yet, okay? But we know enough. We know how she discarded of him and we know what we've got left of him in regards to his remains. I mean, what is there? A piece of bone? A piece of a bone? That's all that's left of him. And she's more concerned with de decorating this casket. I'd be more concerned with getting my hands on my fucking child and rinsing their neck. That's what I'd be more concerned of. With. Not fucking around on the internet when a baby's just died. It's like, it's like it's just like an episode on the TV or something. Just watching this play out on the TV. It's not real. It's not real. It fucking is real. Where's your horror and aghast? Where's your outrage, right? Because I don't waste my time getting outraged with fucking bullshit drama and people arguing and taking sides. I don't, I don't do all that, right? I am not a person that's an emotional thinker. I don't, I'm not emotionally reactive. But certain things like this, certain things like this, I will give it a reaction. I will give it an emotional, angry reaction because that's what this situation calls for. It calls for more people to be standing up to call this out. And each of us, right, when you keep all of your, keep spe speaking and spouting, see something, say something, bloody bullhorn over there, right? If you see toxicity and dysfunction, why are we overlooking it? Why are we pretending that we can't see it? BJ is the narcissistic matriarch of that family. She has responsibility for this because she knew those children were endangered, were in danger, and she continued to work out a state for weeks at a time. She should have been there because she should have wanted to know from morning till night that those children were safe. And you can only do that if you're the one doing the job. Well, she didn't want to do the job, did she? She didn't want to do the job. She wanted to give the job to someone else. You can't dump your kids with a babysitter Monday to Sunday, week after week, month after month and not in some way understand or grasp that those people are the ones raising him. They're the ones meeting his milestones or missing them. They're the ones making sure he's all right during the day, entertaining him, looking after him if he hurts himself. They're the ones that are getting to learn which food he likes, which he doesn't, which textures he likes, which he doesn't, how he plays, his favourite toy, his favourite this, his favourite that what he doesn't like, what he does, the ones that were spending morning till night were the babysitter and her daughter. They were the ones raising that child, not BJ. She passed it off to someone else. And then at night, right, when um, and when it's been said that, that BJ said, oh, she wanted them to go back at night because she wanted to give Leilani another chance. Right, this, this woman. I mean, how many bad decisions does BJ need to make before somebody says these bad decisions are calculated, they're out of laziness and they're out of selfishness and they're out of how they make her look to other people. So it makes her look good if she's been responsible for the grandchildren. It makes her look good if she's working, right? But when you get down to the nitty gritty, she isn't the one getting them up in the morning, washing their little faces, wiping the sleep from their eyes changing their first nappy, giving them their first bottle. She isn't the one giving them a kiss and a hug and being the one that tucks them in bed every night, giving them some fucking stability. She isn't doing that, all right? And as the babysitter said, sometimes they were sent down there dirty, they were in dirty nappies, they didn't send nappies, right? She'd had to call Danny to get to drop some nappies off or milk, whichever one it was. And this babysitter uh, is... is He's having all this dysfunction dumped at her feet, okay? And because she's kind enough to say, yeah, I don't I mind having your kids. Yeah, you can pay me. They can be here. That's fine. I love little kids. I've got a daughter. She'll help me. As much as though, as, as nice as they are, that wasn't an environment for children if, if, if you want those children to thrive and flourish because they need 
like a nursery setting. Okay, they need a nursery setting. They need to have to be able to have some um, trust that the person they see every day is going to be the person they see every day. That's what you have to teach them. That's what you teach children. You don't even realise you're doing it. But by being the one every day in the morning and every and every and the same one at night. You're teaching your children stability. They can rely on you to be there. You're not a person that's just going to disappear for weeks and they don't know when they're going to see you again. They know when they're going to see you. And that's going to be every single morning during the day and every single night that person's going to be the one that tucks you into bed. That's how you teach children stability. So how the fuck was she teaching that from over there? What was she teaching? What milestones was BJ ensuring those tiny little children were meeting? This is what you're all ignoring. She thinks she gets to hide and run from that, all of that, by saying, I work out of state. No, 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 fuck that. If you know your kid isn't looking after your grandchildren, right, you either make tremendous changes to accommodate those children or you fucking give them to someone that's going to. All right. Children are important. They matter. And this killing of them, these murders that keep coming in the news that a family member has killed them, they're happening too often. And you know why they're happening too often? Because people are overlooking bullshit. Signs were there in front of her face, in front of BJ's face, that this was a bad one. All right? This was a bad one. All right? You think what? She's not going to be a bad one because a kid comes along. Oh, the kid's going to make her have empathy now. The kid is going to fix the disorder or whatever it is that's up with Lilani. Is it? Is it? We're all there with our magical thinking. Oh, it'll be all right. And again, that's another narcissistic, sociopathic trait, all this magical thinking. She fucks off for weeks at a time and just leaves them with the woman down the street. I mean, what kind of decision is that? To just be dumping three kids at a fucking babysitter's down the road from morning till night and, and putting all that pressure and responsibility on that woman to look out for these kids. Just because she kept saying yeah to having them doesn't mean that you can just keep dumping them. Because that is, that's the reality. They were dumped there. All right. Dumped there. Because that woman was willing enough to look after those children to the best of her ability. So they were dumped there and that was taken advantage of. Do you know what it was taken advantage of? Because I have seen no move from BJ to incorporate and accommodate those children properly into her life so she's the primary caregiver. The fucking babysitter was their regu regularity, all right? The babysitter was their familiarity. The babysitter was the one they were building commonalities with, okay? The babysitter was the one that they were creating bonds with, right? And now those other two children that have probably got used to her, right, have been fucking removed, Right. So again, they have been given more instability. Those other two children. I mean, it's heartbreak, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And here you are showing us this is BJ's fucking book that she used to read to Quinton whenever she was in town. I don't give a fuck. She should have been in town permanently. That's the whole point to this. Or tell CPS she needs they need to remove those children. All right. Someone needed to man the fuck up up and step up for those children and no one did even cps was a waste of space everybody in those children's lives was a waste of space nobody was protecting them nobody was nobody and it certainly wasn't bj dumping them at the babysitters isn't protecting them dumping them at the babysitters is not loving them that's not nurturing them that's not ensuring all their needs are being met that's not ensuring their emotional needs for their age appropriately were being met. Their mental needs were being met. Okay. Who was in charge of that? Do you even know how Diana raised her children to want to leave your kids there full time like you, your grandkids there full time like you were doing? Right. What if her way of explaining things is nasty? What if her way of managing a uh, disorder and disruption uh, uh, and cheeky behaviour. What if her way of... Did you even know how Diana managed any of those things? What her rules were? How how she regulates the children in her care? Do you even fucking know? Do you even fucking know? I bet you don't. I bet you don't. You didn't care. 
All right. How were you knowing these babies' nappies were being changing when they needed to be changed? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know these kids were being you, they, these kids were not being made that were, were being made to eat food they didn't like, do things they didn't like? How do you fucking know? Because they weren't old enough to tell you back. They weren't old enough. And they're at the ages when they're at the most vulnerable, when it is imperative that the care that you provide for your children, if you are leaving them alone with somebody else, you make sure that person's top fucking notch or you don't leave your kids. You don't leave your kids anywhere where there is a slight risk or there is some kind of thought in your mind that this person is a bit iffy. BJ didn't give a fuck, all right? She dumped him at the babysitters and fucked off to work. All right, and here, oh, look. Oh, she used to read a book. She used to read him a book. Oh, did she? Did she? Oh, oh well, I'm going to give her a tick, okay? She's got a tick on the board. She would read him a book when she was in town. Whoopee fucking do. I can't believe how deranged this is. Anyway, I found the phone call that I was uh, popping off about, right? Because that's all I've done. And I, I am so sorry if it sounds like I'm doing it at you, the listener. My anger is at what happened to that baby, the lack of response from CPS. My anger is towards um, Sure for playing this down and trying to normalise it and she's defending BJ to the hilt. That woman does not need defending. She needs to take responsibility for her lack of action. I'm angry at the situation, so I apologise if listening to this, it does sound aggressive or rude. For me, when I'm doing this, kind of a video i'm venting out to the whole universe it's not at people in particular however it is directed at sure and it definitely definitely is directed toward bj absolutely the anger expressed um and if the the disgust expressed and if the emotion expressed that is all yeah that's where i'm pointing it all at you bj you all right someone needs to tell you this shit you need to pull your socks up and wake the fuck up because if I was in your position, I'd be on my fucking knees, hating myself and just, I'd just be beyond disgusted in myself. I'd feel like a piece. I just, do you know what? I'd feel like I'm not even worth existing. If I would if I was in your shoes, I would not be on the internet fucking bragging and wowling and, oh, people are sending you jewellery. Uh, people are putting money in your cash app. People are fucking helping you pay the funeral expenses when it's already been said that the state will pay for them if, it, if it's in a situation, if the death is in a situation like Quinton's. But people are sending money and people are giving money to uh, bloody Sher because she's so caring and kind towards this heinous, horrible story. I mean, it's enough to make your bloody head spin. Anyway, let's get on with this, this call. Hello, happy good friends. Today, we will be reading this beautiful book. It is called Wherever You Go, I Want You to Know, written by Melissa Kruger and illustrated by Isabel Lundy. All right, let's get started. Listen, little one, I want you to know I have a big dream wherever you go. There's so much to do and so much to see. How you're feeling, because while everyone's... Okay, hold on. Right, look. Okay, hold on. I'm going to see. Hey, boo. Hey, I'm on live right now. I just thought, you know... I wanted to ask how you're feeling because while well, everyone's throwing all this shit around, I think it's important. You guys hear? <laughs> this is BJ's best friend, the one that's been there by her side through all of this. Oh, it was the best friend. And we need to hear, right? So I'm prompting you now to sound upset because I need my audience to hear this is really affecting us in our real lives. Right? Now, wake up, people. Pay attention. The baby has been murdered. We don't know how yet. He was discarded in a um, dumpster. The mother watched while the dumpster was collected by the, tr the dumpster truck and tossed into the back. All the rubbish emptied out into the back of the truck. She watched the compressor thing press down and start crushing this, all the material and rubbish in the back of this dump truck, including the body of her baby, a 20-month-old baby boy, Quinton. Um, and only when that truck left did she leave. Only when she was sure that that baby's body had been disposed of did she leave the scene. Right? So this is what we know. Now, I need a random woman to come on and show how upsetting that is. Are you for fucking real? Nobody needs to see somebody upset to grasp the gravity of this situation. This is manipulation. I'm telling you now. 
for 19 years. 19 how you're feeling because while everyone's throwing all this shit around, I think it's important. You guys hear? This is BJ's best friend, the one that's been there by her side through all of this for 19 Listen, she even says as the woman's crying you know, or pretending to cry, it's all histrionics. Are you listening? Can you hear it? Just listen in to this. You need to listen. Hey, I'm on live right now. I just thought, you know, I wanted to ask how you're feeling because while everyone's throwing all this shit around, I think it's important. You guys hear? She's... This is BJ's best friend, the one that's been there by her side through you all hear? of this for 19 years. 19 years. They went to high school together. They met, they met in high school. This is not okay. I'm not okay. 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 This is not okay. I never dreamed in a million years that the outcome would be this. Yeah. I swear to you, it would be my all of me wanting to believe. That was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> that, you, the whole family. I, can't do this here. I, can't. I know, honey. You guys see? They're not okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, you see? You see? That's... That Have you heard, Cher? You see? You see? You see? What other explanation? What are the... What are the... What, what language do I need to speak for you to interpret this correctly? She has just called that woman up and prompted her to portray upset. And then she's here saying, did you hear it? 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 What the fuck? What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? These are just de emotional manipulative games. That's all these are. Why do we need BJ's best friend to come online, put on these fake histrionics to confuse and lie to people, lie to the same people that are your members, right? So that they too believe, oh, this is really affecting us in our real lives. Anybody with a working brain would know that this would be affecting somebody or the family connected to the story. We don't need somebody to come on and be prompted to show us crying, in quotes, and grief, in quotes, for us to get the gravity of this situation, sure. All right? And the fact that you think this way just explains so much about you. It explains so much about you. That you go to these lengths to do these things. It's disturbing. But it's done so covertly. And it's very subtle. So half of me isn't surprised that people are falling for it. But at the same time, the other half of me is frustrated. That people don't see it. So the real life behind the and the one that's been there by her side through all of this. <coughs> for 19 years. 19 years. They went to high school together. They met, they met in high school. How are you feeling? Because while everyone's throwing all this shit around, I think it's important. You guys... Okay, hold on. I'm gonna see. Hey, boo. Hey, I'm, I wanted to ask how you're feeling. Okay, hold on. So listen to how the woman first responds. She goes, hey, hey, right? And then she starts to put on the histrionics. Listen. I'm gonna see. Hey, boo. Hey, I'm on live right now. I just thought, said, you know, hey. I wanted to ask how you're feeling because everyone's throwing all this shit around. I think it's important. You guys hear? She's this is There's the prompt. While everybody's throwing all this shit around, I wanted to know how you're feeling. How are you feeling? Jay's best friend, the one that's been there by her. Hey, I'm on live right now. I just thought, you know, I wanted to ask how you're feeling because while everyone's throwing all this shit around, I think it's important. You guys hear? This is BJ's See the best friend, the one that's the been there by her side through all of this for 19 years. Nobody starts crying the second somebody says to you, I wanted to ask how you're feeling. And immediately you hear her go, <laughs> oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. 19 years. They went to high school together. They met, they met in high school. This is not okay. I'm not okay. Okay. Is not okay. This is not okay. I never dreamed in a million years that the outcome would be this. Yeah. I swear to you, it would be my all of me wanting to believe. That was an accident. Yeah. Yeah, the whole family. I, can't do this here. I, can't. I know, honey. You guys see? They're not okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. And then she okay. goes right back to talking. Okay, I'm sorry. And she goes right back to talking. Are you telling me that was genuine and authentic? Hurt and grief, really? Is someone trying to pass that off to me as genuine? <laughs> the insult to your intelligence should be enough to make you annoyed with this. All right? Because that is an insult to anybody's intelligence all right that is an insult what just went on there the pictures of the coffin the casket with grandma on it the matriarch of all this dysfunction and toxicity that passed down and reached through to quinton i mean the irony of having her on that casket is fucking disgusting to me she is the last person that should be on that casket the last person What have we concluded from this? What have we concluded? Well, I think 
throughout the video, I explain and define what we have concluded from this. The toxicity, the generational dysfunction, the fact that we all need to get smarter and better educated um, on this whole entire thing. We need to raise our voices. We need to speak out about this. We need to stop letting it just go by unnoticed. How many more children need to be abused by their parents or grandparents before we do something? When we are going to have to be the ones that call it out, that do something in some way to make it stop. Quinton could quite easily be the face of a foundation. That that's what that stands for. Generational dysfunction. But I'm not over there, okay? And I don't have the tools or the equipment or the necessary contacts to set up those kinds of things. It's like when the Petitos just set up a foundation and immediately people were donating money. I don't know where to start. We're doing things like that. But this something something drastic needs to change because one child dying at the hands of their parent is one child too many it's just one too many and there's tens and tens i dread to even say hundreds and hundreds of cases of this going on but we don't yet know about it or those kids survive and they grow up and they just become adults we don't ever know that it happened to them that they were being endangered and in danger by their own parents and grandparents it is just so sad. I wish I could do more than just make this video and pop off about it. I really wish I, do, I could, but I don't even know which direction to start or where to go, right? But something needs to change. Social services is not working, okay? And children, they can't afford to have children slip through the net. They can't afford that to happen because what that means is those children likely end up dead, murdered. The final moments by their parents. Can you even imagine? God, and they're just so tiny. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. Sure, I don't like what you're doing over there, not for one second. Not for one second. And BJ, I'm glad she's where she is. She deserves it, all right? And she probably won't get charged because this whole system is fucked. And everyone, including CPS, to a grand level, uh, is quite happy to overlook signs of abuse, symptoms of abuse, obvious abuse, and keep children in an abusive home around the primary abuser. So, as for BJ, if she only gets these 10 days, I hope these 10 days are the worst of her life. I hope these 10 days in, in inside locked up are torture. Because if this is going to end up only ever being the ever kind of uh, retribution, right, or vindication for what she allowed to go on and did nothing, uh, then I'm glad I hope these 10 days are the worst of her life, all right? If she ain't going to be charged for nothing or held accountable, I'm glad she's where she is and I'm, good, I'm glad I'm glad that judge stood the fuck up for Quinton and locked her up. That's what I'm glad. I'm glad that judge had something to haul her ass into jail for, okay? Whatever it was, I'm glad that's where she is. I'm glad. She deserves, to spe she deserves to spend years in there for what she did, all right? Because that child's life mattered, okay? And if she gets something like 10 months or two years, it just doesn't cut it. It just doesn't cut it. They need to send a message, all right? If you overlook abuse, if you're overlooking your family members abusing kids in your family, right? We will hold you responsible and we will hold you accountable for what you're passing down, okay? Because to some degree, Leilani is, a sh is just a complete victim of BJ. She never had a chance either. She never had a chance with that type of a mother, all right? She didn't just become a monster on her own. And a lot of what happens with narcissists and BPDs and histrionics in childhood, right, it is um, a trauma response. The disorder that happens to them is thought to be, in one school of thought, um, a trauma response. And when you study it and research it and understand what happens to the self inside when all this trauma is going on, right, and all this dysfunction, the child narcissist is a victim of the parent narcissist. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because at every step of the way, 
of their development, there's been someone ensuring that they're not meeting what they should be meeting. There's been someone abusing them and hurting them and making sure, making sure that they don't get to a point where they can flourish and thrive. They don't want that for their children. All right. Unless, unless they're super successful and it can benefit them. Like the case of like, if you look at the Nick Carter family, I've been dying to do a video on all that. I've half got one sorted out going on about Molly and doing the reaction to that. Or if you look at the um, Britney Spears' family, you will often get narcissistic parents, some of them, right? They will have high achieving kids, right? Kids that overachieve. And they will push them and push them and push them. Say like what a lot of people thought was going on with John Benet Ramsey, right? She was being put in those pageants and preened and, you know, made to look perfect and stuff like that. A lot of those narcissistic parents start off with the kids like that, pushing them to do all these kinds of activities, pushing them into that kind of um, the entertainment industry and pushing them and pushing them. And you'll hear, I've heard um, other child actors well, that, that are adults now that um, were forced into that industry by the parents. And then you, you hear stories again of those parents taking their kids' money or mismanaging their kids' money. And typically, those parents that we're hearing about, they're narcissists. They're narcissists that have pushed their children to be overachievers and be successful so that they can profit off it or they can, um, well, they can just profit off it from attention, money, they're looked after, right? It's, it's disturbing. It more, more of this family dysfunction needs to be spoken about because it's across the world, it's across the nation, it's everywhere you look. It's everywhere you look and everywhere you look, somebody else is overlooking it. This instance of this in this house, right, is what it can lead to if it's continually overlooked. That's the bottom line. I think that's what we conclude. Dysfunction is important to acknowledge and correct and get healthy. And avoid the people that aren't. Avoid them because they are dangerous. Not necessarily to a point they're going to kill you, but psychologically and to your emotional well-being, they're dangerous types of people to, to be avoided at all costs. To be avoided at all costs, anyway. BJ should be held accountable, sure. She's in, report, in part responsible for her lack of action in protecting Quinton, okay? What she didn't do is what ended up leading to his death. There, do you understand it? What she didn't do were the actions that ended up leading to his death. All right, okay? So to my uh, subscribers or anyone that stopped by just to take a listen, I appreciate you. Thanks so much. You don't have to agree with me. You can share your thoughts and your um, opinions in the comment section below. As always, love lots and bye for now.